Hey everyone. In this video, I'm gonna go through setting up a Canvas device. So this device here. It uh, let me look at Can messages and send them as well. Now I plan on using this on a new car that I'm gonna get, but it's not just cars that use this. So CAN stands for controller area network and lots of things use them like the power wall or chicken factory machinery, all sorts of things. So this is the adapter I'm gonna set up. Now I'll put a link to this because this is a good one. I did get one previously that looks like this. Don't get one of these, okay, forget that. I just wanna show you this, not to get. Okay, I'm gonna stick with this one. I'll put a link to this in the information. So I'll go through now how I set this up. Now before I get going with this one, I'll show you why this other one's crappy just briefly. So I've just plugged it in, and if I show you the message on here, you'll see it's come up as a serial device. So you'll see in dev, I now have that device. So it just comes up as a serial device. But if I do IP link, you'll see all I've got here are my normal network adapters. So what I'll do is I'll get rid of that, clear the messages, and start again. Now watch what happens when I plug this one in. Okay, put it in. You'll see the messages that come up, I've got a CAN adapter. And here, when I do IP link, you'll see I now have this CAN zero, which I can use. I mean, it's still down at the moment, but you can see I have this adapter. So the reason I want this one is because once I set this up as a network adapter, I can use Wireshark and all sorts of things to do the capturing. So I'll show you how I'm gonna actually set the config up on this. Now if I do IP link set CAN zero type CAN and help, you'll see I get all sorts of uh, options here, okay? So that's how you get some help on it. What I'm gonna do is set it up as IP link set CAN zero type CAN, bit rate 500,000, for instance. And then I'm just gonna do IP link set CAN zero up. So now you might have seen the lights just came on here too, so that lets you know some stuff. Show IP link again, and you can see it's up. So that's up and ready to go. So now, if I run a Wireshark or something, you'll see I have a CAN adapter somewhere. There it is and I can just start capturing the CAN adapter like a normal network interface. Now this is just sitting on the desk here, so I've got no messages flying around, but I'm gonna install CAN utils, which has a command CAN send, so you can send some messages. So I'll just do the install, even though I've done it. App install CAN utils. Okay, it's already installed. But now you have a command called CAN send. Just uh, CAN send. So CAN messages are pretty simple. They have an ID and a data payload in their simplest form. So the ID can be 11 bits worth, so it can be up to 7FF in hex, and the payload can be up to eight bytes. That's it, just an ID and a payload. So I'll send a couple of messages on the bus here so you can see Wireshark capturing them. Okay, so I'll start my capture, CAN zero, and say CAN send, CAN zero, because that's the interface. I'll just call it ID one, two, three, and I'll give it some bytes. So that's there. If I adjust this a little bit, you can see I'm not going to use source and destination. So I'll just piss them off. I don't want to confuse you with this length here. So that's to do with the um, network stack. What I'm interested in here is the CAN bus. Like, so as I said, you've got the ID, which is here. You can see the one I just sent out was 123. So the ID is 123 and there's the 11 bits there for the ID. And it also has the frame length. So it says here how long the data payload is going to be. So that's four bytes, as you can see in brackets there. And there's the four bytes of data that I sent. So what I can do is I can send another one out here with, with those bunch of bytes, and you'll see it come in here. So the same ID, one, two, three, but this time the data is different, and there it is. Now what you might have just noticed is when I press send on the command, it took a sec before it actually came up in Wireshark. And that's because there's, there's nothing else on this CAN bus here. It's just sitting on the desk. So it was, it was waiting for an acknowledgement that it didn't get. So I'll show you now the electrical side of this thing. Okay, I've got a scope here and I've got a couple little wires hanging out here. So I've got the CAN high and low because it uses differential signaling. And I've got the, uh, the signal ground here, which you don't always use for the receiving end, but I'll, sh I'll use that to show you the voltages on these. So I've got the scope here showing two volts per division. So you can probably find references about the voltage, but basically you've got your zero volts at the reference and you've got the high and low. Now they normally sit at 2.5 volts all the time, except when there's data going through. And when there is data going through, the high one will go up to three and a half volts and the low one will go down to one and a half volts. So if I look at the difference between those two, when there's, when there's no signal, which is a one, when there's nothing there, it'll be um, the zero difference between the high and low. And when there is a pulse, it'll, the difference will be two volts between the high and low. I'll try and show you that on this scope. 
Okay, so this is ground, this is high, and this is low. So if I put the, uh, the negative on the ground there, and put this on, you'll see when I do this, it'll go up to two and a half volts. Now I've got two volts per division on here. So you can see it went just above two, hopefully you can see that. And this also, if I go to the low bus, is also just above two. So what I'll do, just I'll put it back on the high one and I'll send that message again. And you'll see, and you'll see that it went from there to higher up. Now if I put it on the low voltage, on, now if I put it on can low, you'll see it goes from there to down. Okay, still hovering around the two and a half volts, but the high one goes up to three and a half, the low one goes down to one and a half. But what I'll do now is I'll put the uh, negative of the scope onto, actually, I'll put the high, I'll put the positive on the high and the negative on the low. So, if you can see that. So now the difference between them is zero because they're both at two and a half volts. And now when I send it, you'll see the signal going up there by a volt. Now I'll do that again and try and give you a closer look. So I've gone back to the ground and the high. And when I do this, I'll try and pause this thing. Okay, so I've paused it. Hopefully you can see this. The, the pulse isn't quite a nice square. You can see it sort of trails down on its way down. And same if I do the, the low one, it'll be messy as well. So I'll try and pause it when I do it. So they're not beautiful pulses, they're a bit messy, but that's between the ground and the signals. So what I'll do, again, I'll now go back to putting the scope between can high and can low. So can high, can low. Okay, and I'll do it one more time. By doing that, you can see they're nice and clear. So even though I picked up crap along the way and this isn't really set up real well, the difference between those two cancels that out and you just get the good signal. So that's what I wanted to show. Now, given that I set that up at 500 kilobits a second and I'm only sending eight bytes, it's a bit strange that it was transmitting for so long. And that's because, as you can see, there's no, there's no other circuit on there to acknowledge that message. So it just kept sending it for a while. But I can change that in the config for the CAN bus. So I'll show you that. So back before I did the IP link set CAN zero type CAN bit rate 500,000, I could also do one shot on. So that'll just send one. Okay, now I'll bring that back up, IP link, set can zero up. Now I won't be able to show you that on the scope because it, it's so quick. So sometimes you see a flicker, but you generally don't. Okay, so that's, that's the CAN bus in action. So what I'll do is I'll send a different message to, I don't know, 456, uh, what do you call it, 665, I'll send something there, I'll send a couple of them. So you can see up here, I've got the ID 456 and that. Now I can filter in Wireshark by ID because it's just a field here. And once you've got that field, you can just apply as filter selected. And you can see there, it's using CAN ID. Now in a real system, there's gonna be CAN messages going all the time to different IDs, and you might be only interested in capturing one. So I wanna set up a capture filter on Wireshark to do that. Thing is, I couldn't, and I'll show you why. So when the ID is one, two, three, you can see that's here, starting at the second byte. So not zero, not one, but two. So for bytes two and three have the ID. Now if I, Let's say I save that message that I just recorded there, and I'll just show it on TCP dump. So TCP dump, read test can. You'll see all the messages got there. So you see the IDs, which are here, one, two, three, and the other one, four, five, six. Now I could use a filter here from the capture saying ether two, colon two, which two, which like I showed before, starts at the second byte, and it's saying those two bytes must equal hex value uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. If I do that, I'll just see the ones that have 1, 2, 3. And the other one was 4, 5, 6, wasn't it? Okay, so 4, 5, 6, you can see I can filter that there. But I can't set that as a capture filter. If I try to do that, I'll have a problem. And the reason is, that's not an Ethernet interface, it's a CAN bus one. So it won't let me set that. Ether 2, 2, blah, 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 equals 0, x and 1, 2, 3. I can't set that up. Now, as I said, that's because it's not an ether type. If I, if I try to set that up as link, that should have probably worked, but it didn't. And I can see in the source code here from the TCP group in libpcap, it says for, for can type, can link layer type filtering not implemented. So they haven't implemented. 
But here's the good thing about open source. I got in touch with them and asked for that, put that as a feature request, not really a bug as such because they said it's not supported. So it's more of a feature request. I put that in and they got back to me straight away and it looks like they're gonna implement that. So basically I went through the situation that I just showed you and as he thought also the link should work but I knew it didn't. And then I went through it with them and, and showed them that, gave them a capture, told them which device I was using, which is this one here. And he said, look, he's, he's gonna get hold of one and, and see what he can do. That's what I like about open source software. You can easily get in touch with them and usually get things done. Now that's for Wireshark and, and TCP dump, but really I'd wanna use something more suited for the CAN stuff that I'm doing. So I'm gonna use a program called Savvy CAN, which I'll show you. All right, so here's Savvy CAN. And what you do is you set up a connection, which I've already done, you can see it there, but I'll just go through how I did it. Add new device connection, and it is type socket CAN. That was the thing I set up. So socket CAN, socket CAN, and then pick the CAN interface, which is CAN zero, as you saw. It's already connected, it's ready to go. Uh, the speed is 500,000 is what I set it to. So that's there. So what I'll do is I'll just send something, and you can see it up the top there. Boom. CAN send, CAN zero, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. You can see it comes up here and it gives you the ASCII readout so you can see the one that I made a word and the other stuff that might pop out at you. And you've got all these options here to customize it. Now the thing is, once I start looking at something like the car, I'll, I'll have to figure out what IDs are, what messages and what the messages mean. You can put all that in here and build up a database of, of what the CAN messages mean. So as I said, I've just got this installed because I'm just setting this up ready to go, but that's probably what I'll use. But it's nice to have Wireshark as well because I just like Wireshark. Now when I go to look at this on a car, I have to get into the car's CAN bus somehow, and there may be more than one. But what cars will have is an OBD2 connector and most of the times they're useful because uh, they have to have that by law. But I know the Tesla, well, I believe, the Tesla doesn't have its CAN buses on here. It only has 12 volts just to satisfy that law. But anyway, pins, I think it's six and 14, don't quote me, are a CAN bus on here and you'd be able to pull that out. So what I wanna do is rather than mess around with all this, I want I wanna be able to set this up in a car. So I've got a couple of cables on order, just a, the OBD2 cable that plugs into this, sorry, the, the plug, that plugs into this, and I'm gonna use those 12 volts to down convert to five volts to run a Raspberry Pi. So that'll run off five volts, and then I'll have the CAN bus adapter connected to that, so that'll be there, connected in there, inside the, the car. So I'll have the CAN bus and 12 volts to five volts in here, in a little project case. Now I'll set this Raspberry Pi's Wi-Fi up to be an access point as well. So it's a client, it'll join my network and I can do stuff and I can look at Wireshark in here. But I'll also have it as an access point so if I've got a laptop, I can just connect to it wirelessly even though I'll probably use SavvyCAN as I just showed and hook this directly to a laptop. Now as for the Tesla, I believe it has at least four CAN buses and they don't fit all those on this connector. So it has this custom connector here, which has four different CAN buses on it. And they go to some pins on here, but that's not gonna be standard, obviously, because it has four of them in it. So I'm gonna have to rig something up there to get them if I choose to do that. But even though I've got this cable here for the Tesla, I don't know if I'm gonna bother doing that because I don't really wanna pull apart the car to get to this plug. I mean, it won't be too hard, but I just don't know if I can be bothered. What I'm focused on is the new car when I get it. And I might also have a look at the power wall because as I said, that uses CAN messages. But anyway, that's my setup. I've got a Raspberry Pi ready to go, CAN bus adapter ready to go. I'm just waiting for a car to do it. So <laughs> I'll leave that there. And until next time, take it easy.